Kath. Welcome to my channel, Made by Kath Craft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my videos. This week's video is my November sewing and chat video. I've done two of these type of videos before. I did one in September and one in October. And if you watch those, then thank you very much. But basically in these videos, and I'm planning to do one each month if I can, I take you along on a week of my life. I pop on every day, share um, what I'm wearing, what sewing project I'm up to, if I've received any new sort of sewing related arrivals in the post, like patterns or fabrics. Yes, yeah, so I just generally bring you along on my sort of sewing related life um, for a week. And I really enjoy filming these videos, so I hope you enjoy watching them too. So today um, it's Monday in my week. The time is just coming up to 12 o'clock. This morning I went out to run a few errands in town and um, I've got the food shop arriving any minute, so hopefully it won't interrupt me filming here, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plan to unload the food shop in a moment once that arrives, but after that I'm hoping to have an hour or two to get on with my latest sewing project. And I'll share details of that in a moment, but first I'll share what I'm wearing today. So today I am wearing a handmade cardigan and a handmade dress, and my cardigan is one I knitted using a kit from We Are Knitters, and the kit is for the Hackney cardigan. And it's a really nice cardigan, it's made with moss stitch, and I really like the texture of moss stitch. And it's kind of got a drop shoulder and I do like a drop shoulder too, but it's quite a simple cardigan shape. See, so yeah, I bought it um, use, as a We Are Knitters kit and it's knitted in this really lovely merry wool, which is one of We Are Knitters wools. It's 100% merino yarn and it's so soft and cosy and comfy to wear. Um, I've mentioned before, I find some wool a bit itchy, but I really don't find merry wool as itchy at all. And I made it in this colour, which is described as mustard, but it's almost like a golden colour. I think it's a really pretty colour. And it's a really nice to knit, it's quite a straightforward shape. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed knitting it, I really enjoy wearing this one too. Um, and the dress I've paired it with, with is this dress here, which is the Forsyth dress by um, French Navy. And French Navy is quite a small independent pattern company. It's run by a lady called Sarah, and I think she's based in South Africa. And she has some really lovely patterns. I've made a couple of her dresses, and I've also made her free Celanti which is a really nice pattern you can just download for free on her website. It's a really nice kind of basic t-shirt pattern. But I really love the style of her patterns. And this is one of my favourite ones of hers. And it's the yeah, full size dress. And here are the line drawings. Ooh. It is a quite relaxed fit dress with a slightly dropped waist. It's got yoke pockets and then it's got these panels on the bodice, on the front and the back. So you can kind of have quite a lot of fun playing around with the stripes on this pattern. I've made another version as well as this version with a stripy fabric where I've kind of done horizontal stripes across the front and then vertical stripes to kind of play with the stripes a bit. And it's got a button down back and I do love a button down back on a dress. So yeah, it's quite a nice relaxed, easy to wear dress. It's designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics. The only downside on this pattern is it isn't available in the biggest size range ever. Um, the size range goes from UK size six to UK size 18 and the largest size is for bust 42 waist 35, hips 44. So it's not the biggest size range ever, but I think Sarah is wanting to work on that and extend her sizing. And I make the smallest size in this dress. It says it's for bust 32, waist 24, hips 34, but it's quite a relaxed fit. So although I'm bust 32, waist 26 and hips 36, I didn't bother grading out because there's plenty of room. It is quite a relaxed fit dress. But um, I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks with the cardigan. Oh yeah, and I made it in this um, cotton e-cap fabric that I got from Etocri. Um, Etokri is a large website um, and the fabrics come from India and they're really lovely um, and I love cotton e-cap fabric so a while back I did a bulk order of a few different e-cap fabrics which I've all turned into garments now and I really enjoy wearing them and the, the cotton is so lovely and soft and comfortable to wear. Um, I did do this dress with all French seams because it did fray a little bit um, but I quite like the finish of the French seams anyway. Oh, and I'll show you the button down back because um, I had fun picking some sort of contrast buttons. I'll just turn around so you can see. So yeah, the buttons kind of, I think, match the kind of mustard colour of my cardigan, just by coincidence. Um, but it's a really comfy, relaxed dress to wear. Um, yeah, and um, I, I think it works quite well for this time of year pair with a cosy cardigan and I've got some black tights on too. So that's what I'm wearing today. Um, now I'll share with you what I'm planning to start on this afternoon. I've got a new sewing project I'm planning to start and I'm planning to finally um, cut into some fabric that I've had for a few weeks now and I've kind of been umming and ahhing over what to make using this fabric. And it's this really beautiful um, Atelier Brunette viscose fabric, which I got from Minerva. Um, I'm a member of the Minerva Craft Club, so you get 10% off your orders, which is always nice when you're buying a more pricey fabric like an Atelier Brunette. 
but they're always lovely quality and as you can see it's kind of yarn dyed I think so yeah it's not a white base it's all black through and through which is really lovely actually it's not black it's actually a very 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 dark navy colour but so dark you could almost think it was black and it's got these really lovely sort of pattern with this sort of taupe and orange colours on so it's a really pretty fabric so I've been wanting to turn it into a dress of some sort I think I bought two or two and a half meters so it was enough to make a dress but I wasn't sure what to make I initially thought maybe the wilder gown but um, I made a toile of the wilder gown in a different viscose fabric and I talk about that in my October makes video which I published last week and I'll link down below if you haven't seen it so I made a toile of the wilder gown and I really enjoyed sewing it but I'm just not sure it's the right dress for this fabric so then I was also thinking um, of this pattern here which is the Sudley dress by Megan Nielsen and I've made the blouse version of this pattern before but I've always wanted to make the dress version um, I'll show you the line drawings it's available as a blouse and a dress it's got this pretty sort of keyhole detail which you can wear either at the front and the back because it's a dress that's reversible which is quite clever it's got a keyhole and then you can also add a little tie and then you can also add a collar and the dress is kind of like a smock dress and it's quite a loose fit but yeah I really like the idea of turning this fabric into that dress but there was something about it I wasn't sure I've got a few loose fitting smock dresses in my wardrobe and I wasn't sure I wanted another one of those so then I had an idea I could maybe do a mashup of two different patterns because I really like the collar from the Sudley dress and I thought maybe I could put that collar on a different dress so I could have that little feature um, but also a kind of more fitted dress so I've decided to do that so I've decided to borrow the collar from the Sudley pattern and put it on this pattern here which is the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee. And this is a really nice, it's again, it's a dress and blouse pattern. And it's got a gathered skirt again. Um, it's got wet bust darts here, which it suddenly doesn't. So it gives it a bit more shaping, which is what I wanted. And then you can make it, yeah, as a blouse or dress. And it's got these sort of gathered sleeves. So they're sort of, yeah, quite a balloon sleeve with a little frill at the bottom. But the Bakerloo features this really large collar with a frill around the edge. But I thought maybe I could um, pop on the suddenly collar instead to make it a slightly more understated dress, which I thought would suit the Atelier Drew Brunette fabric. That is my plan. In terms of sizing, the Bakerloo dress has a really good size range. I've got the paper one, paper pattern, and it goes from a UK 6 to a UK 20. But there's also a PDF version that I think goes from a UK 16 to a 28. So it's a really nice size inclusive pattern. And I just really like the shape of it. Um, I've made one dress version before a while back, and I made it in a blue needle cord with a little sort of white sort of ruffle. And I really like that version, but I thought it'd be really nice to have one in a viscose because I think it will create quite a different shape. So yeah, I'm planning to make this pattern, but um, add the Sudley collar. And I think that would be quite nice. Um, the good thing about it is um, I don't have to trace out all the pattern pieces again because I've got all the pattern pieces from my first dress. I believe I made a bust 32 inches and then graded to a waist. Sorry, I made the, I made the size 6 bust, um, which is 32 inches. And then I graded up to the waist, so that size 8 for the waist and hips because the size eight um, waist is 26 inches, which is me, and the hips are 35.5 inches, which is pretty much me, or like half an inch smaller. So I'm gonna keep the same sizing, because I like that before. And um, yeah, give that a go, really. So I think the only thing I'll need to do is create a new pattern piece to fit the Sudley collar onto the Bakerloo dress, because I can imagine the neckline shape will be slightly different, so I need to have a play around to make sure it fits. So that's my plan today. After the shopping's arrived, and I've got that all sorted out, I'm going to get all the pattern pieces out of the Bakerloo dress and then I'm going to have a go at um, adjusting the collar piece from the Sudley to fit on the Bakerloo dress. And I think that should make quite a pretty dress. So I'm quite excited about finally cutting into this fabric, which hopefully I'll do this afternoon. So um, I will say goodbye now and then I'm hopefully I'll pop on a bit later to show you how I'm getting along with um, making that collar piece and cutting out my fabric. So I'll say bye now and hopefully see you a bit later. Bye. So I've started to have a play around with the pattern pieces for my Bakerloo Sudley mashup type dress. And I started with the collar because that's the main thing I want to borrow from the Sudley dress and put on the Bakerloo dress, like I mentioned. So what I've done is I've traced out the Bakerloo collar pattern piece, which is um, which I've highlighted in pink because you can see the original shape of the Bakerloo collar piece. And then the first thing I did was I added on 1.5 centimetres at the front and the back of the collar. And that is to take into account the fact that the Bakerloo collar would have a ruffle around it, which is about one and a half centimetres deep. And I don't want to add a ruffle, I want a simple kind of rounded collar. So, um, but I wanted the pattern pieces to meet at the front. And at the moment, they would only meet at the front on the Bakerloo piece once you've added the ruffle. So I added this extra, yes, yeah, slice down the front and back to make sure that is taken into account. And then the next thing I did was to compare the seam allowance at the neckline of the Sudley versus the Bakerloo. 
and the Zuddy neckline seam allowance is 0.6 centimetres, but the Bakerloo neckline seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres, so I draw a line, drew a line about one centimetre in from the edge of the Bakerloo pattern piece. Um, so that and then I then traced off the Sudley based on that line there, because otherwise if I traced off along this line, it would have ended up being slightly smaller as a collar piece, and I wanted the full volume of the Sudley. See, so yeah, I use that line, um, traced off the Sudley, kind of moving it around to kind of get the, the shape of the Sudley. So that is where I've got to now. So um, now I need to cut this piece out and um, cut out four um, pieces in fabric and then interfacing two. So fingers crossed um, that'll work. But yeah, that's my plan now to cut this piece out and then, then get the rest of the pattern pieces together so I can start cutting into the fabric. So I'm just checking back in as I've actually made one more adjustment to my collar pattern piece. Um, I just thought I'd finished and then I had a quick check of the Sudley pattern instructions again and I realised that the 0.6 centimetre seam allowance for the Sudley collar doesn't just apply to the neckline, it also applies when you're sewing around the edge of the collar as well. And I based my pattern piece on a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance, so this amount here. So what I did was um, I added on an extra one centimetre just around the edge here, just to make sure the size of the collar is going to be as the Sudley pattern intends, rather than a bit smaller based on a larger seam allowance. Yeah, so hopefully that's all the adjustments I need to make now. So what I'm planning on doing is tracing out this new collar pattern piece, and then I'm going to keep this because I want to keep this piece just for reference. So I'm going to trace it out, cut it out, and just um, check its shape and check it looks um, the shape looks good because I've obviously sort of changed it a little bit by adding on the extra seam allowance amounts. And then if it's okay, then that I'll use that pattern piece to cut out the actual fabric. And then the Sudley actually has a second under collar pattern piece, which is just slightly smaller around this edge than the top collar piece, just so that when you sew them together and turn them the right way out, the seams are kind of pulled under so you don't see the seams on the front of the collar. So what I'm planning on doing is if I'm happy, once I've traced and cut out this collar piece, I'll then just create an under collar piece that's just slightly um, smaller around this edge. Um, as the pattern intended. So yeah, hopefully um, once I've done those pieces, I'll be able to get on to gathering all the pattern pieces together and start cutting it out. So yeah, fingers crossed. So I've now cut out all of the main pattern pieces for my dress and I don't have too much fabric left. As you can see, this is a fabric I've got left. There's not a great deal. And the only pattern piece I haven't cut out yet is the pockets. And I haven't got quite enough of this fabric to cut out for um, pocket pattern pieces. You can see the pocket pattern piece there for reference. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look um, at my sort of offcuts of fabric from other projects and see if I've got something suitable to cut out for pocket pieces because I would like to add pockets to this dress if I can. So I'm going to look for something similar in sort of weight to this fabric. And then I think I'm going to use the leftover fabric here to make some bias binding because I'd quite like to use this fabric to use to make the bias binding around the neckline for the dress. So I'm going to cut a couple of strips of bias binding from this fabric and then I'm going to go and have a look at my fabric and remnants. So I will check back in with you tomorrow and let you know if I found anything suitable. So wish me luck and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, it's Tuesday morning now and I've just got back from the school one. It's actually quite cold out there this morning. One of those winter days where the sun's shining, but the air is really crisp. I think it's the first properly cold day we've had so far this year, actually. But um, I'm heading out with a couple of friends shortly to go for a walk. But I thought I'd pop on here first just to share what I'm wearing and what I'm hopefully going to get done a little bit later if I have the time. So today I am wearing a pair of ready to wear jeans and a handmade top. And this top is quite an altered version of the Astoria top by Seamwork, which is a jersey top. And I'll show you the line drawings. It's quite a close fitting and cropped jersey top. You can either make it with long sleeves or um, three quarter length sleeve. And I think the waistband is designed to sort of sit around your natural waist. So um, yeah, my version though is quite altered because I made a twirl of this top um, in some scraps and I didn't quite like the cropped feel of it or how it was fitting. So yeah, I've changed it quite a lot. And my version is a bit more of a looser fit and quite a bit longer. And I've omitted the waistband at the bottom because I thought I'd like it so I could tuck it into jeans and a waistband would make it a bit too bulky. And I've also made the arms a little less close fitting as well because I found the original arm pattern pieces came a bit too tight on me. But I really like how my versions turned out, even if it's quite different to the original pattern. And I particularly like the fabric that I made this top in. It is a um, jacquard knit by Mind the Maker in indigo night colour. So it's quite a deep sort of navy blue. And it's got this really pretty sort of embossed leaf print on. I'm not sure it's that easy to see on the camera, so I'll stand up and hopefully you can see if I come a bit closer. 
So it's quite a subtle um, print, but I think that's quite nice. And um, it was really nice fabric to sew with actually. It's really stable and it's quite substantial. So it makes quite a nice cozy top. But I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see how it looks. Like I said, I've sort of adjusted it quite a lot and made it more of a jumper style. Um, I've got a top underneath so I can kind of layer it up and it can be really cozy. So that is the Astoria top by Seamwork. So that's what I'm wearing today. Um, so today, after I get back from the walk, I'm hoping I might get started on a little sewing of my Bakerloo dress with a Sudley collar. I'm planning to start with the bodice and see how far I get. I'm not sure how far I'll get, it depends how much time I have. So I might pop on later and share with you how I'm getting on there. But I thought I'd also share now. Um, you know, yesterday I said I was going to try and have a look for some fabrics potentially to use as pockets, um, pocket bags for the dress, because I would quite like to have pockets. So I had to look at kind of off cuts I had from other projects and I hadn't got anything that was really quite right. Um, but I'll share what I have got and see what you think. So this is the original fabric. Um, this is one of my skirt pieces. So the options were, I found this viscose fabric here, which is a slightly lighter weight, which would work quite well. Um, but um, I think the white flowers are a bit too bright and might sort of almost sort of be, be seen through the fabric because it is a sort of fairly lightweight viscose. So I don't want to risk that for a pocket bag in case it does show through um, the skirt. Then I found some lining I'd use. I think I use this as my lining for my Oslo coat. And it's quite like a silky lining fabric, um, which might be an option. It's a bit like it does show that the fabric's navy because when you put the black next to it, you can see yeah, it's definitely black. But I'm not really sure about the feel of this for pockets. It's quite silky and I'm not a big fan of things that are too silky. <laughs> um, so it's another option. But my third option, which is a little bit out there, but I think might work in a kind of fun way, is this um, viscose twill um, by Mind the Maker. I think it's Mind the Maker Prince, which I made into an estuary skirt and I have a decent amount left, enough for pocket bags, certainly. So yeah, um, it's a bit jazzy next to the um, this fabric. You wouldn't see it a lot, I think, because inside the pocket. And when I held it up to the light, the kind of goldy colour isn't sort of bright enough to show through this fabric. So I don't think you'd see it through the fabric. But what do you think? Um, is it too bright or do you think it'll be a bit of fun? Obviously, it's just for pocket bags, so you wouldn't really see them a lot. I would just know they're there. Um, but I'd be grateful for your opinions. I'm not sure I'll get on to sewing the skirt up this week. We'll have to see. Um, so I'm hoping if I pop this vlog up on Saturday, I might get some opinions on whether you think that'll be OK for pocket bags or whether you think maybe not. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I'm not going to cut those out yet. I'm just going to start on the bodice and see how I get on. But I'd be grateful for your opinion or whether that's a bit too out there or whether it's OK. Um, you know, I guess with a handmade wardrobe, there's no reason why you shouldn't have fun making fun pocket pieces. But yeah, I'd be grateful for your opinion. So yeah, that's my plan for today. So I will um, say bye now and I'll hopefully pop on a bit later when I've got my sewing machine set up and I'm starting to sew my bodice to let you know how I'm getting with that. So I'll see you later. Bye. Hello. I thought I'd just pop on again now because I'm at my sewing table now, um, also known as the dining table in our house. I've got my cup of tea and I was about to get my sewing machine out to start sewing the bodice of my dress. But I got all the pattern piece out that I cut out for the bodice and I realised I hadn't cut out the interfacing for the collar. I often find, I forget, I get really excited I've got all the fabric cut out and then forget the interfacing pieces. But I need to cut out two of these um, collar pieces um, into interfacing just to give a bit of structure to make sure the collar holds its shape. But I thought I'd pop on because I thought I'd share what interfacing I'm using because I always find choosing interfacing for a project can be quite tricky. And I'm always really interested to find out what interfacing other people like to use because I think it can make a big difference to how the final project looks. So I thought I'd share what I'm using. Um, so ever since I started sewing, I've used the same brand of interfacing, which is Valine, because I think when I started sewing, I remember someone talking about how it was really nice quality and I've always been really happy with it. And I generally get it from Minerva because um, I joined their craft club and then you get 10% off. So it ends up being fairly good value. So the interfacing that I generally use as my go to interfacing is F220, which is this one here and I have it in white and black. And it's an interfacing for woven fabrics, but it's not actually woven itself. I think it's made up of a web of fibres. I think it's described as a bit like a felt and it's fusible. And it's described as light to medium weight, but it's got, it's quite nice and fine, but it has got a bit of structure to it. So it does hold things in a nice, it kind of does hold things and give things a bit of body and a bit of structure. So that was my one option. And then more recently, um, I saw somebody on Instagram recommending a different in interfacing. So I thought I'd give it a try. And it's this one here. And this is called G700 and it is a 100% cotton woven interfacing. 
So it's really lovely because it's cotton, so it's really nice and breathable. And it's really, really soft. It's fusible again. Um, but yeah, it's got a really, really nice drape to it. So you can see it's much more drapey than the F220. Um, even though it says it's described for uh, medium weight fabrics, so I think it's got a lot of strength to it. Um, yeah, it's a lot more drapey. So for my project, I decided to go for the F220 because I thought with the collar, I want it to kind of stay in place. I don't want it to get too floppy. Um, so I thought the, this one being a bit less drapey would be perfect. But I thought I'd share this um, G700 as well because it was new to me. I didn't know you could get cotton interfacing and it does feel really lovely and soft. And so I think it'll be great to use for projects where you do want to retain the drape in the fabric. But I'll, they're both available at Minerva. That's where I got them from. So I'll link them down below in case you're interested in checking each of them out. So yeah, I'm going to cut out my um, collar pieces in this F220 and I think that'll work really well. Um, so I'm going to get my ironing board out in the moment and get the collar pieces cut out and ironed on to the top collar fabric pieces. And then I'll get my sewing machine out and hopefully do a little bit of sewing. So I will check in with you tomorrow and show you how far I've got in terms of um, sewing the bodice for my dress. <laughs> so I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, I'm just popping back on again with another update. So I've cut out my interfacing pieces for the collar and ironed them onto the collar. And I've now got out my sewing machine and my overlocker and I've threaded them both up, ready to start sewing. And I was about to start sewing when suddenly I realised I hadn't cut out any waist tie um, pattern pieces. So yeah, I was planning to add waist ties to this dress to cinch it in a little bit at the waist, like I did with my first Bakerloo dress. But when I was cutting out the fabric, I just didn't think about the waist ties. I totally forgot about them. I think because the Bakerloo dress doesn't have a waist tie pattern piece, it just went out of my mind. And then I suddenly remembered it just now as I was sitting down to start doing a bit of sewing. So I've got my scrap left of this fabric, which is here. I've now cut the bias binding um, out of it now. So this is all I've got left. And I'm just figuring out whether I can fit in two waist ties, which are a decent length so that I can insert them into the side seams of the bodice. And then there'll be enough to be able to tie in a bow at the back. I'm not sure how they're going to fit in. Because I've got, I could cut them the continuous length of the whole piece, but there's a really narrow piece here in the middle. And so if I cut two pieces and they were each half of this width, I think they'd end up really skinny. So um, yeah, they might be, I think it would look nice with them fairly skinny waist ties, because I think it would suit the kind of dress and the style of the fabric, not to make them too chunky, but I think they might end up a bit too skinny if I cut this, so I fold this in half and then fold it in half again, they'll end up really quite small once I had a seam allowance. So yeah, I'm going to have to have a think about it and see whether I can, can get two decent um, pieces of fabric that make long enough and wide enough waist ties. I'd quite like to avoid having to piece pieces of fabric together because I think it'll look a bit bulky in those places. So if I can avoid doing that, I will. So no sewing for me yet. I'm going to have a little bit more of a play with this little scrap of fabric. So wish me luck and I will let you know um, tomorrow how I got on if I managed to create two decent sized fabric pieces to make my waistband. So fingers crossed um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, it's Wednesday morning now. I've just got back from the school run, dropped my children at school, and hopefully this morning I'm going to get an hour or two of sewing, which will be really nice. But I thought I'd pop on here first, say hello, um, share what I got up to yesterday, what I'm planning today, and also what I'm wearing. So first of all, what I'm wearing today, I um, it's quite, yeah, it's a bit chilly again today, so I've got a nice cosy outfit on. The top is a really recent make of mine, and I actually talk about it in my October makes vlog, which I published last weekend. So I'll put a link down in case you haven't seen it. But the pattern is the Tilly and the Buttons Freya top, which is from the Stretch book. It's a really nice book and this is my favourite pattern from the book. I've talked about it on quite a few of my vlogs. I've made the mock neckline version. It's quite a fitted jersey top. And I've made it in this really pretty um, ribbed tensile jersey by Meat Milk, which I got from Minerva. It's really lovely, soft, um, drapey, cosy jersey. So I'm really enjoying wearing it today. But yeah, I talked a bit more about this top and the adjustments I made and that sort of thing in my October makes vlog so I won't talk too much about it here again but I really love wearing Freya tops they're really comfy to wear and the pinafore is an older make of mine I think it must be a couple of years old maybe and I made it using this pattern here it is the Pippi pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade it's a really pretty pinafore pattern with some really nice details so it's quite a fitted pinafore with a waistband it's got a bib at the front with darts to give a bit of shaping and then it's got a crossed sort of ties at the back and then the skirt has got darts at the back again for some shaping and these really pretty pleats at the front and then these really nice feature pockets and because it's quite a fitted pinafore there is a button opening down one side 
So it's a bit more, there are a few more fiddly bits to um, sort of sew in this pinafore than a basic pinafore. And Jennifer Lawrence says it's for adventurous beginner seamstresses. And I think that's probably, yeah, about right because Jennifer Lawrence instructions are really detailed. So they really hold your hand through the process. So although there are some fiddly bits like buttonholes and darts and that sort of thing, um, yeah, the instructions are really good. In terms of sizing, the pattern goes from a size six to a size 24. And what's really cool about this pattern is it comes in A to D cup. I think that's quite nice. I think Jennifer Lawrence's new pattern, she's now um, putting patterns out in two ranges, which then take you from a size six up to the largest curve size is a size 34. And it goes from an A cup to an F cup in her newer patterns. But this is one of her older patterns, so she hasn't um, put out in the larger size range, at least not yet. It's a really nice one to sew. I made mine in this um, corduroy fabric in a rust colour. I think it's a really pretty colour. It's a Robert Kaufman corduroy and I got it from Guthrie Garney quite a long time ago. It's quite a fine corduroy. So yeah, I guess it's a needle cord, but it's quite substantial. So it holds the structure of the pinafore quite well, I think. And I'll just stand up so I can show you the um, button down opening and the pocket too. So yeah, it has some lovely um, features, this pinafore. It's really comfy to wear, nice and relaxed to wear. And I think it goes well with a frayer top. So that's what I'm wearing today. So yesterday I showed you how I was getting on, starting to sew my um, Bakerloo dress with a Sudley collar. So I did get a bit of sewing done in the end after I sort of um, had a think about the waist ties. Um, for the waist ties, where are they? I decided to use the whole width of the scrap I had left, cut it in half and then use each half to make a waist tie a little bit wider rather than making two really super skinny ones. So I've sewn those up and here is one of them. So I'm hoping it'll be long enough if I sort of put it in my side seam. I'm hoping there'll be enough to do a little bow at the back to kind of pull in the dress. I really used all of the fabric. Um, yeah, at the end here, you can see I've got the Atelier Brunette logo here in the sel from the selvage, even included, just to eke out the length as much as possible. So I have got enough to tie my back. So fingers crossed, but I'm quite pleased with the width of those. I and mean, they look quite pretty. So then my waist tie is done. And then I stay stitched the neckline. And then I started to put the back piece together. So here's my back piece here. Um, yeah, there's the kind of, this is gonna be the button closure at the top there. I need to add the rouleau loop but I got to do a bit of top stitching um, around here, just finished off. So there it is. I always love a bit of top stitching and I'm quite pleased how that came out. So hopefully I'm gonna continue on sewing that today, this morning for a couple of hours. And after that, my husband and I are hoping to go out to lunch together today, which will be really nice. Um, we haven't been out to lunch together. Well, I can't even remember the last time we went out to lunch together. He does work at home, so he is here. He used to be office based before COVID, but he's been working at home since COVID and he hasn't gone back yet. So he is here, but generally he's working busy on calls. He'll come down, grab his sandwiches and pop straight back up again. So um, it might be that he has a call and it doesn't happen, but I'm think keeping fingers crossed it might happen because it would be really lovely to go out to lunch together. And if we do, I will sort of try and take a little video of where it is. because It's quite a nice area, although the town is really built up. It's quite a nice little area with green space that you walk to to get to the cafe. So I'll try and bring you along with us. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed that'll happen. Um, so I might see you a little bit later and otherwise, if not, I will catch up with you again tomorrow to share how I've got on with sewing today. So yeah, bye. So we've arrived at the park and we're just going to walk through to the cafe now. And it's really pretty here, loads of um, trees with autumn colours and yeah, a really nice little walk through the park to the cafe. So yeah, hopefully we'll have a nice lunch. Hello, it's Thursday morning now. I've just got back from the school one. It's actually nearly 10 o'clock because I ended up stopping and chatting to a couple of other school mums, which is really nice, but the morning is definitely going a little bit faster than I expected. Today I've got a um, few house jobs to do and a couple of errands to run, so I'm not sure if I'll squeeze in any sewing, but I thought I'd pop in anyway and share how I got on sewing um, yesterday. And also yesterday I had a pattern arrive in the post, which I'm quite excited about, so I will share that in a moment. But first, um, I'll show what I'm wearing today. And today I've got on a jersey dress and I made it using this pattern here, which is the Agnes Top Pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And it's quite a nice, simple jersey top pattern. It's got a scoop neck and it's quite close fitting. And you can add like ruching to the shoulders and the front, or you can make quite a simple jersey top. And on the Tilly and the Buttons website, there is a tutorial which shows you how to um, turn the Agnes Top into a dress with a gathered skirt. So I use that tutorial to make my dress. And it's quite a nice straightforward tutorial. You basically crop off the top 
around your natural waist and then cut out two um, re rectangles for the skirt and then kind of gather it together. So yeah, it's really quite simple. And I made mine in this really nice um, cotton jersey. It is an art gallery cotton jersey and I do find their cotton jerseys are really nice and soft and snuggly. And I think I got it from Lamazi Fabrics and if it's still in stock there, I'll link it below. Or I'll see if I can find it anywhere else. But it's a really pretty kind of plum colour with lots of different flowers on. And I particularly like how the kind of yellow pops um, on the plum base. And I'll put up a picture of my dress so you can see it, um, how it looks on. It's just like a really comfy, relaxed dress to wear. Um, yeah, and quite a simple sew too. Obviously Tilly and the buttons patterns are designed to kind of hold your hand through the process with lots of nice photos. So it's really clear and straightforward to follow. But that's what I'm wearing today. And I'll include a link to that hack below in case you're interested in it. But yesterday I did get some sewing done and I also did a bit more sewing in the evening because my husband was working late and I often like to sew if he's not around. Um, so I pretty much finished the bodice of my Bakerloo dress with a Sudley collar and here it is. And I'm really pleased with how it's shaping up and how the collar went in really nicely so I'm pleased how that went in. So yeah, it's got the Sudley collar and the Bakerloo blouse and then at the back it's got the little button sort of closure with the rouleau loop. And then I've added the waist ties and I think they're looking a decent length. And the only thing I haven't finished on the bodice so far is the um, to hem the sleeves. I wasn't sure initially whether to um, just make a simple kind of elastic channel and make a simple elasticated cuff, or whether to do the Bakerloo style cuff with a sort of ruffle. But then I realised um, when I was looking and how to do the ruffle bit, because I couldn't remember how to do it, that um, you need to cut out an extra pattern piece. It's kind of like a facing to go inside to kind of create the ruffle an elastic channel for the um, sleeve. And I realised I hadn't cut out that piece when I was cutting out all my pattern pieces. I'd completely forgotten about it. And I don't have enough fabric left to do that facing piece. And I haven't really got a suitable fabric as a contrasting fabric. You saw my fabrics earlier in the week for pockets and I think the leopard print might be a little bit too jazzy because you'll be able to see it on the uh, cuffs. So that decision's kind of been made for me. I think I'm just gonna finish off with a simple um, elastic channel um, to bring in the cuffs and I think that probably will work better anyway because it'll be easier to sort of fit underneath cardigans and things in the winter it'll be a bit less bulky so I need to do that and I need to go on start on the skirt I need to decide what I'm doing about the pockets too but I think that's probably going to be a um, sewing job for the weekend or next week at this rate but I'm really pleased how it's shaping up now and I think it's looking quite cute and I like the proportions of the collar on the bodice so I've also got my pattern to share with you that arrived yesterday and it's one I'm really looking forward to giving a go. It's a fairly new pattern release and I've been sort of admiring it ever since it was released. And it's this pattern here. It is the Hovia Coat and Jacket by Megan Nielsen Patterns. It's a really nice jacket with drop sleeves and it's got loads of different options built into this pattern. It's got three different lengths, like a crop length or a mid length or a longer length. You can make it either lined or unlined or you can make it with quilted fabric. It's got a tie closure, a belt closure, and it's also got these kind of cool deep angle pockets as well. So I think it's a really pretty design. It's quite a relaxed, kind of casual looking coat. I've seen some really lovely versions on Instagram, and I finally decided to get the pattern myself. And I've also got some fabric and bought the fabric and it's on the way in the post, I believe. So if it arrives today or tomorrow, fingers crossed, I will share it with you on here. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting started on this one. I've got the paper pattern which comes in size 0 to 20 but there's also a curved version available which I think is from size 14 to 30 so it's got a really nice inclusive size range. I think it's designed to be fairly oversized relaxed fit so I think I'll probably go for the smallest size which is size 0 which is bust 32 waist 24 hips 34 and I think it's quite a relaxed square fit it doesn't matter that the waist and hips are slightly smaller than my waist and hips measurements. And I'm planning to go for the um, cropped length. It's quite hard to see here, but yeah, this crop length here, which is lined with a band around the front. So that's what I'm planning to do. And I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. I haven't really got a sort of casual, lightweight coat in my wardrobe, and I think it'll be perfect um, for sort of spring and autumn weather when you've got like a pair of jeans and a t-shirt or a jersey dress and you just want to throw something on top. So I'm hoping the fabric will arrive this week so I'll be able to show it to you. But I'm really looking forward to giving this pattern a go. Um, I like Megan Nielsen instructions. I find them really nice to follow. So I think it'll be a fun sew. So yeah, um, that's the pattern that arrived. Um, that's all I've got um, to share today. I'm not sure if I'll pop on later because I'm not sure I've got any sewing planned. But if not, then I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye. Hello, it's Friday now. It's just coming up to lunchtime. Uh, this morning I went into town and I had my hair dyed, which was nice. I've gone for a slightly darker colour for winter and I quite like this colour. 
So that was a nice morning. I'm now back and I was hoping when I got back that my parcel might have arrived that contained the fabric for my Hovia coat that I'm going to make. But unfortunately the parcel hasn't arrived yet. Um, so I don't think it's going to come today, which is a shame because it means I can't share it with you in this video. But I am planning next week to do a fabric haul type video. So I will hopefully have received it then and then be able to include it in next week's video. But I thought I'd pop on anyway and share what I'm wearing. And also I realised I haven't shared with you my current knitting project. I've always got some sort of knitting project on the go. So I'll share with you what I've been working on this week too. But first, um, today I am wearing a sort of shirt dress and it is the honeycomb dress by Kokawawa Crafts. It's a really pretty shirt dress with a few interesting, slightly different details. Here's the pattern and there's a blouse version and the dress version and I've only made the dress version and it's got a button down bodice and then a stand up collar and then panelling at the front and back and there's back yoke too and then a gathered skirt with pockets. And my favourite feature is these little waist ties that you sew into the panels and there's two at each side so you can tie them in little bows at the side which I think is quite pretty and it also cinches in the dress nicely. And I've made the short sleeve version. I originally made this dress with long sleeves and a slightly longer length but I felt it didn't really suit me so I chopped it off to short sleeves and above the knee now and I quite like it and I often layer it with a black top underneath because it's quite a kind of wintry fabric I think with a dark green colour so I think it works quite well with a black top and some black tights and the fabric is a really nice um, brushed sort of viscose twill fabric that I got a long time ago from Sewis Faction. It's really cosy um, and soft to wear it wasn't my favourite fabric ever to sew with because the fabric did snag a bit um, but now it's finished and I've kind of forgotten about that <laughs> sewing process bit and I really enjoy wearing this dress and I'll put up a picture so you can see how it looks on. It's really nice and cosy and I think it's a pretty pattern with some unusual details and the size range on the Kokoa crafts dresses and patterns generally are really good. Um, there's two size ranges for the honeycomb dress. There's a UK 6 to UK 24 size range which is for a B cup and then there's a UK 18 to a UK 36 range with a D cup. So it's a really inclusive size range. And I think I made the smallest size, the UK 6, because the finished garment measurements on this one show it's got quite a lot of, um, sort of an ease in. And I didn't want it to be too oversized. So I think I sized down slightly um, and I quite like the fit now. It just cinches in nicely at the waist. So that's what I'm wearing um, today. But I thought I'd also share yeah, what knitting project I'm working on at the moment. I've got a new knitting project on the go. I do always like to have um, something that I can knit in the evenings um, that I can pick up and just knit for a little bit. And the current project is a cardigan. And if you saw my October makes video, which I published last weekend, in October I finished a cardigan which was based on this pattern here, which is a downtown cardigan by All About Amy. It's a really nice sort of basic sort of simple cardigan pattern using garter stitch and I really like the texture of garter stitch. And I made a sort of cropped, slightly more fitted version in a pink Aran yarn. And I really like that cardigan. I've really enjoyed wearing it. And I thought I'd really love to make a black version too. I thought a black cardigan that's knitted would be perfect in my winter wardrobe and would work really well with outfits, for example, like I'm wearing today. So I've got started on a black version and here it is. Um, I've just worked on the back at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, so I haven't got too far yet. I'm just working at the back, but I'm enjoying taking it slowly. The yarn I've used for this um, cardigan is actually different to the yarn I used for my pink version because unfortunately Wool and the Gang I used the Super Trooper yarn for the pink version and they didn't have a black um, Super Trooper yarn so I couldn't use that. So I had a look around and found that um, We Are Knitters had quite a similar um, Aran, style, Aran weight yarn um, in Merino Wool again which doesn't irritate my skin called the Merry Fine and this is it here and they're doing a black colour so I decided to go for that. And um, it's really nice. Well, actually, it's really lovely and soft. It's definitely not going to, I'm not going to find it itchy. But unfortunately, although it's Aran weight, it's got a slightly different feel to it than the Super Trooper yarn I made my first cardigan in. It's a little bit finer and it feels like it'll be a little bit drapier. So I kind of had to redo my stitch count to get the right width because I want to pretty much reproduce that cardigan um, again. And this wool, when you knit the same amount of stitches, it comes up slightly smaller. So I've had to add a few stitches. So I'm kind of having to figure out again from scratch a little bit. Um, but I've got my first cardigan to go on, so hopefully it should be um, fairly straightforward. And once I've sort of got going, I can just knit back and forth. But I'm really enjoying giving that a go, and I think a black cardigan will be really handy. And it's a really nice wool, and it will create a slightly different effect, probably, to the first one, just because the wool is slightly different. So it'll be interesting to um, yeah, see how they compare when I'm finished. But I'm really enjoying that as my latest knitting project, and I think it's going to take me a while. That'll probably keep me busy to Christmas. 
I have got a couple of Christmassy knitting projects that I've got planned that I might um, break the cardigan knitting up with so hopefully be sharing them nearer to Christmas too but this will be my main knitting project um, for the next month or two. But that is the last thing I've got to share with you this week so I'm going to um, say bye bye in a moment and go make myself some lunch because I'm getting a bit hungry now. Thank you so much for joining me on another week of Sewing in Chat. I really enjoy um, filming these videos so I hope you enjoy watching them too. If you have enjoyed it I would love it if you give it a thumbs up and um, if you haven't subscribed as usual I would love it if you would um, consider subscribing to my channel and if you press the bell um, note if you press the bell icon then you'll then get notifications on when my future videos come out. So thank you so much for joining me on another week of Sewing and Chat and I'll be back for one of these again soon. Um, in the meantime next week will be some sort of um, fabric haul type video so hopefully I'll see you then too. Have a great week and I'll see you again soon. Bye!